Selva has many years of experience in data analysis and strategy and has led data sharing and analytics um, initiatives across different organizations. Um, he's currently a data strategist at um, Kowai.co. So yeah, thank you, Selva, like I said before, for stepping in at short notice and doing this talk. So yeah, good on you, Matt. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you. Very yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, be, uh, before I begin, I really want to thank the community for giving me an opportunity and uh, it's great to be plugged in to write the docs community. I've seen amazing conversations, amazing networking happening. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope to, I hope to contribute something to the community as well. Uh, so the topic for today, I'm going to discuss is about are the ways to optimize your documentation workflow. I know, uh, I believe that many of you work in an organization where uh, the workflows are pretty much the engine that drives a lot of activities around documentation. So I'm just going to talk, uh, share a few ideas about what's the way to actually optimize it. So the overview of my talk would be something, uh, I'll intro a bit, bit about documentation and workflow, and then I'll talk about documentation, and then I'll share some tips and tricks to Let's dive in. So, the, what, look, during my experience, uh, previous experience, what I found with, uh, especially with documentation, was uh, it's very, very process intensive. And if you're not very careful, uh, it gets a bit complex. And the other uh, thing about documentation process is that it's very iterative in nature. It's not like uh, where you do developers and it is more like an assembly chain where you do something and then you pass it on to somebody else and then the process actually flows. What I found with documentation is that it's a lot of things are iterated. Uh, once you pass it on to somebody else, it comes back to you or it goes somebody else to go somewhere else in the process. So it's very iterative in nature. And if you don't manage it properly, then obviously it's, it's, it's quite, uh, it turns into a chaotic thing. And I also found that in many organizations, you only have a single technical writer uh, and they write the whole documentation. There isn't any team. They are the team. And for them, it's a bit tricky because um, if they write something, who is going to peer review, uh, peer review their work? Uh, who is going to do the editorial review? So it's a bit of a lot of uh, things. And then they take a lot of additional responsibilities. And for them, it's also very important to have some kind of a, uh, process flow, okay? And uh, if you're a solo writer in an organization, obviously uh, you need to build everything from the ground up. Uh, in many cases I've seen, they have no framework exist uh, currently in the organization to actually pretty much streamline uh, or put structure into how the documentation should be written and how the process flow should be done. Uh, what are the style guides they need to follow and things like that. So. So what, what happens if you don't have all these things? Obviously, it leads to chaos. Um, the, things get quite complex. People don't know uh, who, whom to talk to. What, what's the next step in the process? Obviously, it increases your stress levels and probably you look busy all the time. And in order to avoid that, the best proposal is come up with a high-level framework um, of, for documentation and ensure that all this, the framework is founded based on some good principles. Um, to give you some examples of good principles, um, the documentation should be inclusive and diverse. So, so that, that, that's one good principle. And the other good principles would be the, the documentation you do promotes harmony and in the society. So that's also a very good principle. And then other things is that you're, you're customer focused, you're focused on uh, achieving good outcomes for your customers. Those are the good principles. And once you have good, some good principles, then you build what, the components of the framework. The components of the framework would be something on uh, standards, your business processes, your style guides, and other kind of um, ancillary activities you do. It also in, it includes some uh, uh, technology agnostic tools that you need to use and things like that. So this framework pretty much encapsulates what a documentation should do. And obviously it gives a lot more structure to how things actually work. So coming back, uh, so one of the important components in the framework is a business process. So this business process is the one that actually are going to tell you how your documentation workflow will look like. Okay, so I'm going to borrow some principles from the 
uh, the business analyst community. They use a tool called uh, business process modeling, BPM. And some of the techniques they use is called swim lanes and racing matrix. Okay, a swim lanes is basically uh, you identify who the stakeholders are um, in that whole documentation process, and you allocate what kind of activities they do, and you pretty much put uh, things in sequence. Okay, what are the steps or activities they have to do for the particular stakeholders, and once they have done, which stakeholders it goes to in the next, and is it an iterative process? Does it need approval? All of these things you actually capture. So, to something called swim lanes. So swim lanes is particularly targeted on who your stakeholders are and what kind of activities that each stakeholders do at when. That's very, very important. The next step in the business process is the RACI matrix. Uh, RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed. And it's a very standard kind of an acronym in um, the business analyst world. And what this matrix actually tells you is you take all your stakeholders and you pretty much chart down what kind of roles they play and what kind of activities they do. And then you fill out that matrix uh, in terms of who is responsible, who is consulted, and who is informed. And you fill this matrix. And once you do that, communicate. Communicate to the, all the stakeholders whether this is the roles and responsibility they have. Again, it's a consultation process. Once you have done it, settle on it, and then it helps you with the change management. So you know what kind of things you... Uh, each stakeholder is expected to, expected to do and what they have to deliver at what time. So this, this whole business process modeling actually helps with bringing clarity to your whole documentation process. Very, very important step. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a typical uh, process flow. Uh, so a documentation writer drafts an article based on receiving knowledge transfer or KD from all the developers or other stakeholders. They take screenshots, they build a good glossary, and then they use it and then to draft the article. Once they do that, it goes to a peer review. Peer review is where you give feedback and, and the uh, draft article gets revised. Again, I, I said it's an iterative process. So after peer review, it's an iterative cycle. And once that's done, then it goes to an editorial review where an editor actually checks for the language, the context, and make sure that you know, then uh, the article actually fits in with the holistic landscape of the documentation. So they do that. And once the editorial review is passed, then obviously it goes to for publishing. It's a publishing ready where your publishing team takes an article and then they do this search engine optimization and they ensure uh, the right keywords so that uh, it's, it's appearing in the Google search engine for easy discoverability. Then it goes live. Uh, once it goes live again, uh, you have a few things. Uh, you, really need to monitor how your article is actually performing, how it's actually helping your customers. So you receive your feedback. And this whole cycle is actually ready. And it is a cyclic and continuous process. So I'll give you a bit of a screenshot of uh, one of the uh, process that we actually internally use. Uh, in this example, you can actually see I have swim lanes. For example, con writer has their own swim lanes. And you have QA team, support team. Each one have their swim lanes. And if you see a rectangular box that uh, in the BPM modeling, which means that those are like tasks. So those are the activities somebody needs to do. And it is clearly written. And if you see a diamond shape, that's an approval process. Okay. And uh, you can actually see here the current writer draft sets, and then they refine the draft. And then obviously it goes to the QA team, to check for accuracy, and then goes to the support team. They also do another second round of review and goes to the current writer. And the editor does the final review and then goes for publishing. Okay, so you can actually see here the process clearly written in a very um, human, uh, understandable way. And this can be shared among all the stakeholders. So you can do a bit of a consultation, say, hey, is that what you're trying to do? Uh, is it in line with um, the resources that you have? Can you complete these things? Or is there enough feedback? And you revise it over a period of time as well. And once it's set, then you go on an execution mode. So, okay, I, I believe uh, if these kind of things exist, so I'm going to talk right now about more in terms of what are the ways you can actually optimize this flow. Okay, so the main important thing in all this process uh, uh, optimization is data. So you have to collect data. So here for documentation writer, I believe one of the core metrics they need to focus on is time to value. 
uh, the, the moment you write and the moment the customer sees it, the time has to be very, very short. Uh, when it says short, it should be optimal. If you can't have um, you know, like zero time lag because you can't do that. So it has to be optimized. Some of the process metrics can actually do is you can, if you go back to your uh, process diagram. So for each of those uh, points um, or any, any decision points or activity you do, you put some kind of a timestamp. Okay, so you can actually calculate what's time taken from step one to step three, or time taken in step two, or time taken from step one to uh, to the last step. So real, so time stamping is one of the key metrics. So you can actually understand where those bottlenecks are actually. So that's one thing uh, to look for. Okay, the other one was okay. Time is great, but what about the quality? Uh, because uh, somebody might be doing a lousy job and then pass on to the next one down the line. Obviously, because of that, the quality might suffer over a period of time. So quality metrics is very, very important. So define those metrics. Again, uh, it's all empirical in nature and it's very uh, different to different organization. Uh, ensure you measure that quality parameter as well. And then also ensure you have resources. Okay, How many resources it takes to deliver that piece of activity? Uh, does it take three people to do one chunk of work or is it one people doing five chunk of work? So you need to capture all those things. It actually helps you with optimizing your process flow. As said, once you have this in your plate, the next big thing uh, as a content writer or a manager of a, a documentation team is to identify bottlenecks. You take all these metrics, you put together, and you're trying to understand where the bottlenecks are occurring. Where, are my, where, where in the process people are actually spending more time and more resources? And why is that? If you ask all these questions, probably then it might be easier for you to, uh, because you have all the data with you uh, in terms of analytics, your time, your quality, and your resourcing, it helps you to bring the holistic picture. To give an example, in our team, uh, the lot of time uh, in the process flow, things are getting delayed in the QAP, uh, the quality assurance team, things are getting delayed. And we went and investigated why it's actually happening. And then we actually found out the root cause of the problem because most of our QA team actually is uh, doing a lot of testing and they have little time for reviewing our process documentation. So then we had a consultation with our stakeholders and then we actually carved out some specific time from the QA team and allocated a specific resources so that this gets things on, uh, so that things get done on time. So it actually helped with improving our customer outcomes um, as well. So, and then we put all the feedback to all the stakeholders. Um, yeah. And more importantly, it also helps with identifying your documentation uh, risks as well as you progress. So here's a typical process. Again, uh, whatever I have on the red line, you can actually see, I uh, really want to measure uh, how much time is get stuck in one approval process and one approval to the next approval process. So if you timestamp everything, that helps you. And also from start till the end, we also want to timestamp how long it does take for us to publish an article. Again, it actually varies. If it's a major article we're writing, obviously the, it might take a longer time, but overall you need the data to actually understand whether it's in terms of repeating trends or what's the optimal time you need to do um, th and things like that. So um, as I said, leverage the data um, uh, for all these things. Um, the other important thing is whenever you have workflows, make sure you have good workflow statuses. Um, for example, it's in the draft stage, it's in the peer review, or it's in the published stage, or, it, or it's in the uh, publication ready state. If you define all those work status, it helps with the reporting. So, so if somebody asks you, where, where is this uh, documentation article at? They can actually say it's, a, it's in uh, this stage and it has been there for this many days. It's very, very easy for reporting and also track how you're actually progressing uh, with your documentation cycle. The other thing is, if you think that your documentation team is actually doing a lot of repetitive work, a lot of manual work, try to automate that uh, using some technology tools. And uh, using analytics, you can actually automate, uh, you can use some analytics to uh, technology tools to automate your workflow as well. So if somebody finished reviewing it, and they click a button, obviously the status changes automatically and it's moved on in, that, in, in the process line, okay? And there are tools available where you can take this business product process uh, model as a swim lane and you put it there in the software 
and it actually translate into what kind of activities you do. And it also does the bit of a project management as well. There are tools available uh, in the market. So the typical uh, tech stack, again, I'm, I'm trying to be technology agnostic. Uh, the typical tech stack, tech stack you need is the project management tool where you need to allocate tasks based on your uh, framework and process. Then you have some kind of a workflow automation where your uh, content writer or editor, whenever they do their work and put, them, put in their effort, obviously uh, it's all the workflow is completely automated end to end. And you definitely need a bit of a knowledge base. Now, either it's a, it's a doc as a code or you're using any kind of a single source uh, knowledge base uh, kind of a software, then you definitely need to write that documentation in, in the platform. The main important thing is the feedback. Obviously, the tools are available just to get uh, feedback from the customers. Again, uh, you can actually uh, put into your business process and then iteratively work on improving the quality of the document. So uh, I'm going to share three tips. Uh, the first tip is a review. Even though the business process is done, review a business process every quarter or every six months. It's very, very important to uh, review it because over a period of time, things change, things evolve. So obviously you need to adapt. Uh, again, bring all the stakeholders into one thing and then ask them, hey, uh, what's, what's, what's good about the current process? What's the bottleneck in the current process? How do, how do we actually identify and then solve uh, any kind of business challenges we have? So the review process is very, very essential. So that's the, uh, and focus everything on a customer outcome. Uh, I, I believe I have been into a few meetings and in the business process, they talk about people problems, but again, uh, we need to talk about business problems and uh, not about people. Uh, so again, if you focus all the things with you on the customer outcomes, it actually helps with all the stakeholder consultation, helps to smoothen things and uh, helps with your uh, streamlining and optimizing your business process or the documentation workflow. Uh, the second tip I want to share is if you're doing any repetitive work, um, Try to think about automation, automating as much as possible uh, using the tools that's available at your disposal so that all the people who are in that uh, swim lane or the stakeholders can actually focus on a high value task. So the last tip I want to tell you is uh, obviously as a content writers, we are actually very interested in actually proving our value proposition to our, uh, to our, uh, to our company, to our customers. So the, maze, the best way you can actually prove that value proposition is take measurement and use the data and evidence to show how much the documentation uh, is actually helping the product or your services or any other thing you do, achieving good outcomes, customer outcomes. If you link that using the data and you're able to tell that story, I believe that um, this documentation will be um, the team or um, the, the process will be looked into more keenly by your management and then you can actually excel in your job and then uh, go to the next step. Uh, that's pretty much I've got for you today. Uh, having said that, I put the link of my presentation in the chat. You are feel free to download and if, I'm happy to take some questions as well. Thank you. Thanks, Alva. That was really good. Um... So yeah, I'm, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, but if you've got any questions, feel free to you know unmute and um, ask questions directly. We've got a really nice cozy group here, so I am not too fussed about you know people typing in. So if you've got any questions here, you can um, jump in. Okay, uh, Selva, uh, you touched upon a very important topic: workflows. Something that uh, I see that uh, I'll also talk about the same point in uh, my upcoming presentation. And right. I think it has been a kind of a lifesaver. If you have a st uh, study, reliable workflow in your organization, uh, it can save you from a lot of troubles, even in the time of a pandemic uh, where, you know, things uh, are more uncertain mode. So it can be a very critical tool in uh, resolving yeah. some issues. So yeah. great presentation. Right, and I would you. like to know that uh, what kind of uh, uh, tools you would, or platforms you would suggest that are good for these workflows, would yeah. allow okay. this workflow. 
Yeah, sure. And there's also a question from Roz on what tools do you suggest for automation? So uh, look, I'll answer both the questions. Um, so uh, with the project management, um, you probably know Atlassian um, tools. So you have Jira, you have uh, tools from Microsoft, you have Azure DevOps, and those are the tools you use for pretty much for the task management. I and mean, if you talk about automation, you are talking about few tools like Zapier uh, that can connect to your knowledge base and then automate uh, a lot of workflows so that things flow from one uh, one software to another software without any manual process. Uh, Zapier is one, Integromat, that's another one. Uh, there's also a lot of knowledge-based tools out there in the market uh, that has an inbuilt uh, workflow management. For example, there are tools in uh, KickHelp, uh, Document360, and Notion. Uh, they have a lot of workflow management built into their software platform, and it can talk to uh, your project management and also your feedback tools via this automation tools like Zapier. Thanks, Alvia. Yeah, I've just started using um, Jira, so thank you. Oh, excellent. Yeah. One of the things you did mention yeah. that was really interesting, Selva, was... Um, how you're actually, you know, measuring the data, like uh, when you're actually trying to prove what you've been doing, like you're giving it statuses. Can you, can you, um, do you have like a template that you you could probably share or talk through in terms of, you know, what, what are those important steps that you look at when you're trying to, you know, assign a document, like it goes through different stages. I've, I've usually got it as first draft or review a, um, a final draft and then you're ready to publish. Do you use like a similar pattern as well? Yeah, so our process is a bit uh, complex. Uh, oh, it's, it's, so there, there are five or six things on our documentation lifecycle. So the first stage is obviously the draft stage where uh, we talk about creation. Okay, this is about content creation where there's a few uh, things involved where the document writer go and get the KD and do stuff. So in terms of the high level workflow stuff now, uh, the, the first is content creation. And then after that, it goes into peer review. And peer review, it goes into the multiple peer review, like first stage, second stage. And after that, we have an editorial review process. And after that, it goes to our marketing team where they do this uh, uh, search engine optimization and make sure that it is publication ready. And then after that, it goes for publication. And this whole cycle I'm talking about is completely automated end to end. So whenever somebody does the job and goes and updates something and the next guy gets pinged and they know what to do, uh, and uh, when I say once it's updated, a Jira task is created and they're assigned with the uh, link to the article and they can click on it and they go do their part, close the Jira article, again, the workflow, the next workflow item kicked off and then the whole process streamlined. And we capture data points at every single step. 